ISO performance and sharpness are just massively, massively overrated. In today's world, Cami manufacturers, look, you might not want to hear this, but I'm just going to tell you as it is. It's in their interests. It's in camera manufacturers' interests that you become obsessed with sharpness and ISO because these are the easiest things for them to upgrade and give you noticeable results on. They've even got to the point now where people seem to think that noise or grain or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, but I mean digital noise, is the opposite of sharpness. That's just not true. It's not like you increase the sharpness and you lose noise and if it becomes more noisy you lose sharpness that's nonsense i'm going to prove some of this stuff to you by showing you pictures from harper's bazaar from the 30s 40s 50s and 60s i'm also going to show you kind of modern equivalents to go with it as well and then you can see what i'm talking about i'm going to demonstrate it to you and luckily I kept this edition of Harper's Bazaar from 2017, August 2017. This was a really interesting edition because what they did in this one was they put in some of their old pictures, but they also put in modern interpretations of the old pictures as well. So you, in some instances, we can see directly on one side of the page something that was done in the last decade versus something usually from around the mid to late 1950s or somewhere around there. And we can see the difference. I'm going to illustrate an older style picture from this magazine for you now on its own because I just want to talk about it for a moment. So this is the picture I want to talk about. This is from 1959 and it's grainy. It's also sharp. The grain actually helps. If you notice when you look at it, it seems to have this almost three dimensional shape. Yeah. Do you see that? How you are very aware that it has a lot of depth to it. That's partly obviously due to the lighting, but that's also because of the grain that's in the picture. But the grain is what gives you some of that shading. So I want to talk about noise for a moment. I'm aware also before the keyboard warriors get going that film grain and digital noise are not the same thing to a point, but they have a lot of similar characteristics about them. And one of the things that grain gives you or noise gives you, as long as the camera isn't applying artificial noise reduction to the raw file, because some manufacturers do that, is it smooths out your gradations, your tonal gradations. And you know that if you shade something, the smoother your transitions are between your highlights and your shadows, the more rounded something looks and the more shaded it looks. So you might have seen when, even in your own editing even, when you get those artifacts in the sky because there's not much information, add a little bit of grain to the picture and suddenly it holds up. Why? It's because it's smoothing out all of those transitions. That picture was shot in 1959 and I don't think that I know many photographers that could match that. Now here I'm going to show you a direct comparison. The up-to-date picture was shot on in 2013 and the older one was shot in 1947. I'll try and hold that up fully for you. So that's the modern interpretation on this side here. So we can see that the, the modern version is definitely cleaner. There's no question about that. But do we care? No. Why should we? The modern version is also sharper. Do we care about that? No. Why should we? I prefer the old version. I don't always prefer old versions of things. But in this inst in many instances like this, the ones that the pictures that last are the, the better of the bunch, if you like. And in this instance, I prefer the older picture. It's just more interesting. The entire look of it is better. You can definitely get this look from digital. There's an, this isn't a film versus digital thing. Don't think that. In these instances, I'm going to show you more now. The film pictures are far more heavily edited than the digital ones are. The digital ones are much closer to out of the camera. 2013, 1958. So not only is the lighting dramatically different, the pose stronger, the styling stronger, but we see that again, grainy and a little bit soft. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because it's all about mood. It's all about what you make people feel with your pictures. Because if you can't make people feel something, it doesn't matter. And these things that the camera companies want us to get really excited about, such as the no grain and super sharp images, 
don't matter a damn. There are certain instances, like for wedding photography, where some of that stuff matters. But for most types of photography, this stuff just isn't important. And if you're thinking, ah, it is, it is, no, it's because you've been told to care about that stuff. You've been told to, I'm proving it to you now. You can bet that these pictures that are from 70 years ago or 60 years ago are gonna stand the test of time better than most of these modern ones because look, here they are being printed. And here's another one, 1955, Richard Avedon. Most of you won't know who that is, but he was a famous photographer. This next one's from 1949 and it's my favorite of the bunch. There isn't a comparison, modern pictures go with it, but I want to make a couple more further points with this picture. So I'll just show it to you now. This picture is not particularly sharp at all. It's soft, even. It's not properly in focus. It's very grainy. And it's full of mood and expression and atmosphere and the things that make a photograph. If this picture was shot with a really clean ISO cap performing camera, with a super sharp lens and was tack sharp in focus, do you think it would be as good? I don't. And the point is this, it's the imperfections that make things good. It goes across a lot of the things that we see. We see beauty in the imperfections and things. It's that roughness that makes things look better. The vast majority of the pictures in this world that will stand the test of time have been taken on really old cameras that are not that sharp, not that well performing in ISO and don't necessarily have amazing dynamic range. The bulk of what's out there, that will change over time. And I'm not saying you can't do amazing pictures on the latest gear, but if you're chasing sharpness and ISO performance because you think it's going to make your pictures look better, I'm telling you that history is not on your side. It really is not. And the weight of the world, of everything that the world loves and thinks is amazing and expressive and passionate and brilliant, is not on the side of clinical perfection. And you can see this across the board. A lot of the best bands, their live performances are better than the studio recordings. Why? It's because it's more expressive. It's got those little flaws, those little faults. It's more playful. It's not having to be perfect for the recording. Why do people like records over CDs? They like that sound of that little hiss and crackle from the record. It sounds better, it sounds more real. I'm not saying to shoot film at all. I'm not saying to ditch chasing the latest cameras. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you're looking at something, it's got to bring something to the table for you. I'm filming this on the Canon RP right now. I love this camera, I think it's brilliant. It doesn't stop me producing work that's expressive. My point of this video is to make sure that you're not chasing the stuff that the camera manufacturers want you to chase and that you're finding the things that are useful for you. I think the stuff that's in modern cameras that are, is really, really useful is these screens on the back now, the electronic viewfinders and the autofocus systems that are in them. They're fantastic because they really do make a difference. And if you want to, you can break out of that and use manual focus and get manual focus lenses and stick them on. And they're easier to adapt things like that onto, which I think makes them very compelling choices. What I think is a terrible idea is just chasing massive megapixels, silly high ISO performance and big dynamic ranges because you think that that's going to be the best thing all the time for you and that's going to make a big difference. It just is not. And I say this on many of my videos, if your picture doesn't make people feel things, if you can't express a mood and atmosphere and make people stop and say, wow, that's amazing. Because in those pictures I showed, you know one's zooming into eyelash to see if it's sharp. No one cares, that's not expressive. That's not what things are about. People aren't looking at things like that. People are looking at the overall impact. It's the overall, it's not the zoomed in view, yeah? It's always that overall impact that an image has. Does it make you feel anything at all? Later this year, I'm gonna be taking you along some of my portrait shoots, some of my street photography shoots, some of my landscape photography shoots as well. And I hope you join me for that. So give me a like and drop me a comment. And if this video has triggered you, stop for a moment and think about why has it done that? Because 
A lot of people have been fed a lot of information that suits companies, but doesn't help the photographers themselves very much. But in my own small way, on this very small YouTube channel, I'm gonna try and help change things a little bit if I can. Anyway, see you again next video. Take care, bye-bye.